All right, hello guys. <coughs> so um, today we're going to try and finish off this paper we started on Monday. If you could comment your names, I will just take a register now. Um, oops, I've clicked the wrong button. Uh, da, 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 da. How is everybody? Everyone all right? All right, register. So we've got <coughs> Kieran. There we go. Who else we got? Uh, Jay. Harry. Lucy. All right, Lucy. Can't see you on my list. Uh, there we are. Cool. Uh, George. George, did you enjoy Chunky Shrapnel? Uh, Jake. Jake, cool. Uh, Nula. Uh, Danny. Yeah. Uh, Guy. Uh, Louis. Tristan. Billy. Chloe. Scott. And Elliot. <laughs> I don't think I saw that. Where did you find? You have to link. Me. You have to link me to that. Um. Yeah, I don't think I saw that bit. Looking forward to the vinyl arriving though. I wish I downloaded it though. I've only I saw it twice that night, but uh, yeah. So as far as I can see, I'm still missing Becky, Ollie, Callum, Tom, Lucas, and Isaac. Um, if any of you guys are here, <laughs> cool. Of course it was. Um, anybody else here? Um, Callum, Ollie, Becky, specifically. I've read it. <laughs> Great. Good, good, good. All right. Um, oh yeah, I'm, I'm building a microtonal banana at the moment. I'll show you show you when that's finished. Um, that's my project for the next few weeks is to build a microtonal guitar. Anyway, so um, getting back to this then. Okay, let's make it a bit bigger because that's very small. All right. So we're going to start with this one today. Uh, it's a 10 mark question based on integration. Um, so we're going to start by just giving you guys 10 minutes to, to get into it. Uh, it's a show that question, so you should know if your answer is correct. You should get 39 over 2. Um, give it a try, and in 10 minutes I will be back to go through it with you. Comment if you need any help, and comment... Well, I know what the answer is, and so do you, but... Um, any key bits, comment your maybe your your integral answer. All right, give it a go.
Oh. <clears throat> All right. Can you, yeah, you can hear me. Good, good, good. All right. Um. So. <clears throat> uh, yeah, we want to try and find this area. So what we need to do, um, and I can kind of sketch this. If we find the area of the. Hmm. Let's zoom in. Plan is we're going to find the area of this triangle. And then we're going to find the area of the integral, which is going to be all of this bit. And then we're going to add those two things together. Uh, it doesn't really matter which we do first. Ollie, why are you late? Um, if you don't have a reason, fine, but you mark down as late, so please try and attend from the beginning. <coughs> Alright, um... So yeah, um, I'm trying to think of what the best way to start is. Uh, let's find where the two curve, the curve and the line intersect, because we need those points of intersection to find both of those areas. So point of intersection, we're going to say three x is x squared minus two x plus four. Take it all into one side. X squared minus five x plus four equals zero. So we're going to get x minus one x minus 4. So x is 1 and x is 4 there. Okay, that's fine. Alright, so 1 and 4 there. Um, now we're probably going to want the height of the 1 value. So if I put 1 in we get 3. So my y value there is 3. And I can work out the area of the triangle doing half base times height so it's going to be half one times three which gives me an area of three over two okay now all i need to do is integrate the curve from one to four so we're going to do integral from one to four of x squared take two x plus four which gives me x cubed over three minus x squared plus four x square brackets 1 and 4 <coughs> put 4 in so we're going to get 4 cubed over 3 minus 4 squared plus 4 lots of 4 which is 4 squared take away put 1 in 1 over 3 minus 1 plus 4 so if we work that one out we're going to get 64 by 3 take away um, what's that going to be? A third uh, minus one plus four, which gives us ten over three. So for the integral, we're going to get thirty-four over three. We need to add that to three over two. So thirty-four over three plus three over two gives me. Oh, my area is not that. Um, but why hasn't this worked? Yeah, that should work as well, Karen. Um, can anyone spot what I've done wrong? Because I've got 77 over 6, which ain't right. Um, wait, I'm adding them together, aren't I? Nope, 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 no. that's wrong. Um, oh, why did I, yeah, well spotted. Yeah, I don't know what I did there. That should be. 54 over 3. Cool. Thank you there, Danny. And uh, Guy says, is it one third, not four thirds? X cubed. Where's the four come from? Hmm. 
No, I think it is. I think it is one third x cubed. So fifty four over three plus three point three over two gives me no, Yeah, that's right. Cool. That's fine. That was all I did was I didn't subtract the fractions very well. So we get fifty four over three plus three over two gives me thirty nine over two. Awesome. All right. Cool. So that wasn't too bad. For 10 marks, I think that was very fair. Okay. Next one, seven mark question. Uh, solve this trig equation. So see what you guys can remember about this. I know some of you found trig quite difficult um, back when we did it. A few things to be careful of here. And they've used phi, which is a bit weird, but you can imagine it's a feature if you like. Um, so could you guys try this one? Seven marks. I'll give you seven minutes. I'd like to see a comment from every one of you this time because only a few of you are actually engaging. Sorry, I just cut off my own voice there. Um, comment if you're stuck, comment what you think the answer is, or if you're still working at the end of the timer, comment still working. I can give you some extra time if you need it. All right, thanks, guys.
All right. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, a few, well, Danny commented. Thank you, Danny. You're the only one that commented. Um, there should be 18 of you in this room, so can you all... Even if it's to say you need a bit more time, please comment so I know um, what's going on. Cool, that looks helpful if you guys have got the same answers. All right. Um, so we're trying to solve this. First step is to uh, get it all on one side, let's say, to begin with. So we're going to get... I'm going to change it to feta as well because I think the fire's look messy. So, no. Right, it's a little bit smaller. 3 cos squared, 2 theta. Minus 4 sine squared, 2 theta. Minus 15 cos 2 theta plus 6 equals 0. At the moment we've got a mix of sine and cos, so we're going to change the sine squared into a cos squared using the fact that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. So we can say sine squared is 1 minus cos squared. So let's write that out again, but with our substitution there. 3 cos squared 2 theta minus 4. Put brackets in, make it really clear to you guys what we're doing. Instead of sine squared, I'm going to say 1 minus cos squared 2 theta minus 15 cos 2 theta plus 6 equals 0. So I've changed my sine squared here into a cos squared using a rearranging of this equation. And I've not forgotten that it, we don't have sine squared theta, we've got sine squared 2 theta. So my relationship is sine squared 2 theta plus cos squared 2 theta is 1. So that's why we got the 2 theta in here. Cool. All right, so everything now is cos. So let's keep going. Let's try and simplify this. So we're going to get um, 3 cos squared 2 theta minus 4 plus 4 cos squared 2 theta minus 15 cos 2 theta plus 6 is 0. So we end up with 7 cos squared 2 theta minus 15 cos 2 theta plus 2 equals 0. So that is my... <coughs> Basically that's what we want to solve. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of all this working. If you guys do need this, just pause or rewind or whatever. I'll come back to this later. <coughs> we're, going, we're going to get rid of this. We've got some space. Right, now's the hard bit, which students often forget. And we'll see if you guys remembered this. Hopefully you did. All right. Um, <coughs> we are trying to solve this for theta is between 0 and 360. Becky, that's quite late. Uh, could you... Rewind and just start the video from the beginning. I will take off your attendance, but uh, you should try and uh, not be late. All right. Cool. All right. So, yeah, we're trying to solve this quadratic. Um, but we're trying to solve for theta, and we've got two theta. So, the first thing we need to do is to change limits. So instead of theta, instead of we got two theta, so we're going to times my limits by two. So we still get zero. We then get two theta, and then instead of 360, we're now going to get 720. Notice the upper limit is less than, so we'll see if that's important later. Okay, so I'm going to solve this equation. I'm going to go into the calculator on the screen so I can show you guys how to do it. Go on to the calculator. <coughs> And uh, menu, where is it gone? Equation, if you're using the graphical. If you're using the class with, just go, uh, menu. I, I do have class with, but it's in the garage because I was building a climbing wall and I needed some trigonometry. So um, if you're doing the class with, just go to, I think it's equation solver, and then it should be the same as this. So polynomial, quadratic. So we've got seven cos squared, you got minus 15 there, and we've got 2 there. So we get our outcomes here. We get cos 2 theta equals 2, or we get cos 2 theta equals 0 0.142.
eight. Or one seventh. One seventh is a bit nicer than that. Let's uh let's write seventh instead. Which you could factorize as well if you got exact answers. Alright, let's get rid of the calculator for a sec. So um yeah, so we got to our solutions. Um, cos never equals two. If you if I draw a quick cos graph, actually, should we draw the whole thing? Draw it now and there. I'm going to get rid of the equation at the bottom because we've used that now. That's done. I'm going to replace it with a nice big sketch of cos. So cos looks like this. Now our range is up to 720, so I'm going to draw double the amount of cos up to there. So we've got 720, 360, 180, 540, goes up to 1, minus 1. So you can see cos never goes to 2. 2 is way up there. So that will have no solutions for our equation. So cross it out. So we're going to be solving this one. Cos 2 theta is 1 7. So remember how we do this? We start by finding our primary angle. So if I bring back the calculator, we're going to go to menu 1, 2, cool, there we go. Um, we need to check that we're in degrees. And you can see in the top, can you guys see that? Um, very top there. Next to math, it says degree or deg, so I know we're in degrees. If you need to change it, shift, setup, make your angle say deg for degrees. Cool. So we're going to do arc cos, shift, cos, cos to the minus one of one seventh. So fraction sign one seventh. And this is our primary angle, so 81.7, let's call it 81.8. So let's, let's not do it too many decimal places. So my primary angle is going to be 2 theta. Remember, solving for 2 theta is 81.8. Now, that's one solution. There are going to be a lot more solutions. <clears throat> so 81.8 degrees. Um, if I look at my graph, I reckon 81.8 is about here. Because we cross at 90, so it's just before 90. And I need to find every other solution where we are at the same level. So I can see one, two, three other solutions here, here, and here. Right, so we need to find each of the other ones. Now, 81.8 is measured from this point of the graph. Oh, let's use a different color. Um, 81.8 is measured from the peak there. So I need to measure all my other values from the other peaks. So we've got a peak at 360. So that's going to be 360, take 81.8. We've got a peak after 360, so that's going to be 360 plus 81.8. And we've got this one here just below 270, so that's going to be 270, take 81.8. So let's quickly go through those. So 360, take 81.8. get 278.2. We've got to do 360 plus 81.8, give me 441.8, and the last one is going to be 720, take 81.8, which gives me 441, right, which gives me 638.2. So those are my four solutions, but I haven't finished yet. These are two thetas. We wanted to find theta. Technically, we wanted to find phi. So let's let's do this properly and turn it back into phi for the end of the question. So I'm going to just get rid of this. Da, 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 da. Divide all those by two. And we're going to get, what are we going to get? I'm just going to copy your answers. So Ollie's got them right, 40.9. And I did say I call it phi, so let's, uh, there's phi, 40.9, 139.1, 220 point nine, three nineteen point one. Good. And you do need to call it phi. They might dock you a mark if you call it x or if you call it theta. So it looks like 
uh, a good few of you got it right there. Wow, lots of you. Some of you missed out solutions, though. Um, Danny, George, I think you guys missed a solution each. I don't know how you did that. Interesting, you missed the two middle solutions. Um, Elliot, you as well. So guys, check check your workings. Make sure you know why you missed out a couple of solutions there. Um, that's what you should get. Now, you could do this on your graphical calculator. Um, but I've lost the thing. Hang on, let's rewind. Uh, what are we solving? We're solving two cos 2 feed 3 equals 1 7. So if I go on the calculator to menu, graph. Actually, we could do stuff. I'll show you all of it now. Why not? So way number one you could use it is you get option, calc, solve n. And this is the super powerful problem solver. So I can type in cos 2x equals, what was it, 0 point, uh, 1 over 7. So let's put it in. 1 over 7. So you put in the equation you want solving. You then put a comma to tell them what variable. So we want to solve it for x. And we want to solve it between 0 and 360. And as if by magic, yep, give you a little warning, who cares? Gives us all the answers. So if I scroll up, have a peek. And the last one, 319. So that's a really nice way of uh, doing it. The other way we can do it is we can go on a graph. Let me just delete whatever I had here before. So we can type in uh, cos 2 theta. We can also type in uh, 1 7. I can plot both of those. I need to uh, probably sort my limits out. So uh, G window. Oops, G window. God, it's been slow today. Window. Okay, X is going to go from 0 to 360. And Y is going to go from minus 1 to 1. Cool, so sketch that. Look how slow it is. There's a 0.7. You see, we've got four solutions. Then we're going to go graph solve, which is F5, G solve. Uh, we're going to go for intersect. There we go. Here's our same four solutions as we solved. Yeah, it's well slow. Cool. Anyway, so that's how you can utilize your graphical calculator. Um, either using Solven or using the graph plotting method. Okay, next one. Um, reciprocal curves have this equation. Use the formal drift. Ah, use the. This is wordy as anything. Uh, use the formal definition of a derivative. So, what that means is it wants you to use first principles differentiation. Okay, so this is a. Uh, how many did I say it was? This is a six mark question. I'll give you guys six minutes. I don't think it will take you that long because we definitely did this in class. But uh, let's see what you can remember about first principles differentiation. Starting now.
can see any comments again, so please give me some feedback, guys. But uh, right, let's do it. So, reciprocal curve is the expression used in formal modeling of the definition of expression. So, we get um, the dash is equal to the dash x is equal to f of x plus h minus f of x. And that's your equation for the formal modeling. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, please give me some comments because uh, no one's really, well, I guess it's hard to know what to type for this one. So there's your equation for the first derivative. Um, what am I talking about? First principles derivative. And yeah, so we need to use that to prove this derivative. So f of x is 1 over x. So f of x plus h is 1 over x plus h all on the bottom so we've got 1 over x plus h minus 1 over x all divided by h this is what we need to simplify so to deal with this we have a it's a triple left fraction which is not great but for to start with let's um i don't know actually what's the best way around this um let's let's turn it into a, a single fraction instead of a triple layer fraction. So I'm going to say this is 1 over h times by 1 over x plus h minus 1 over x. And then I'm going to subtract the fractions in the bracket and then expand it all. So subtracting the fractions in the bracket, to subtract fractions you need a common denominator. So my common denominator for this one is going to be x plus h. So I'll leave 1 over h outside. So we're going to get x over x bracket x plus h because my common sorry my common denominator is going to be x times x plus h we're going to times both of them together subtract x plus h over x brackets x plus h so let's do the subtraction so we're going to get 1 over h x minus x minus h over x squared plus xh to expand the bottom as well. Cool. So the top is going to become x takes x is nothing. So we just get 1 over h minus h over x squared plus xh. <coughs> and the x on the top is going to cancel with the h out. The h on top is going to cancel with the h outside which will lead us to minus 1 over x squared plus x h, which is almost there. The last thing we need to do is say, as h goes to 0, that whole term is going to go to 0, leaving us with one over, minus 1 over x squared, which is what we wanted to get there. Cool. Hopefully everyone's right with that. The next one is on circles. Um, let's see how you guys do with this one. So we've got a nine mark question on circles. Um, give me some answers to part A in the comments, please. Uh, part B is a show that. So yeah, just, just have some answers for part A for this one, if you could. Um, so nine marks, and I'll start it now for nine minutes.
Oops. <laughs> All right. Um. Cool. Let's go through this. So we got uh Alex going to answer three six and radius root two. All right. Let's, let's uh let's check if that is correct. Okay. All right. So given these two points lie on the circle, determine the coordinates of the center and the size of the radius. All right. So we need to find a and b. And we're going to use that by putting the points in, solving two things simultaneously, get the equation of the circle, and then complete the square on the circle to find its circle form so we can get the radius and the center. Okay, so let's start solving these then. So we're going to put these points in. So we get minus 4 squared plus 7 squared um, minus 4a. Uh, plus 7y plus 43 equals 0. So we're going to get 16 plus 49 minus 4a plus 7y plus 43 equals 0. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll see what happens. Um, so simplify that a little bit. Um, what we're going to get is uh, 16 plus... It's all positive. Yeah, big numbers. 16 plus 49 plus 46. 111. So minus 4a plus 7y uh, plus 111 equals 0. So that's that's from putting in the first point. Let's put the second point in. So we're going to get minus 2 squared plus 5 squared um, minus 2a plus 5y plus 43 equals 0. So 4 plus 25, take 2a, plus 5y, plus 43 is 0. So 4 plus 25, plus 43 is 72. So minus 2a, plus 5y, plus 72 equals 0. All right, so we've got two linear equations there to try and solve. All right, um, I'm going to do these by hand, but you could use the uh, calculator to solve simultaneously. So I'm going to solve these via the, um, I think via elimination is what I fancy. So I'm going to get the same coefficient of a, because we've got minus 2 in this one, minus 4 in this one. So if I times the bottom 1 by 2, we're going to get minus 4a plus 10y plus 144 is 0. Cool, and now I can use elimination to solve these two simultaneously. So I'm going to um, subtract these in order to cancel out the a's. So nice big minus sign. So the a's going to cancel. We get 7 take 10 is going to be minus 3y. And 111 take 144. It's going to give us minus 33 equals 0. So therefore, where I've said y, all along I meant b. So uh, just spotted that. It's not y, it's b. So that should also be b. So if we solve this, minus 3b equals 33. So, minus, so b is going to be minus 11. <coughs> and we can use this to find a. So um, minus so 4a is 7 lots of minus 11 plus 111. Divide that by 4, and we get a is 8.5. I think that's right, so let me check in the other equation. So uh, Yeah, a is 8.5 and b is a minus 11. So let's get rid of all this. Isn't it 7b? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 7, 7b. Yeah, cool. That's what I corrected now anyway. But yeah, thanks, Karen. So yeah, a is 11, uh, b is 11 minus 11, a is 8.5. So let's put those together into the circle. So the circle now looks like this. x squared plus y squared uh, plus 8.5x 
minus 11y plus 43 equals 0. Okay, so that's what I want to complete the square on to. So I'm going to get my x's and y's together. So um, x squared plus 18.5, let's call it 17 over 2. plus y squared minus 11y plus 43 is 0. So complete the square. So we're going to get x plus 17 over 4 squared minus 17 over 4 squared plus y minus 11 over 2 squared minus 11 over 2 minus 11 over 2 squared plus 43 equals 0. And uh, we're going to work our way through this. So we're going to simplify everything so we can clear the screen. So keep that as it is. Um, x plus 17 over 4 minus so 17 over 4 all squared. Is going to be, oh, what's that? 289 over 16. I might check the answers to this because they do seem a bit weird. Uh, plus y minus 11 over 2 squared minus 121 over 4 plus 43 equals 0. So I get, and I don't trust this answer, but we'll see. X plus 17 over 17 over 4 squared plus y minus 11 over 2 squared. I put all the numbers on the other side. And I get Hmm. I, yeah, I'm not sure about this. Not sure at all. So if we square root that, we find the radius. Root 85 over 4. So center would be uh, minus 17 over 4, 11 over 2. And radius would be root 85 over 4. Right, if you guys have done this, uh, let me know if you think I'm correct. I am going to find the mark scheme and check because I don't feel very confident about that one. So that was the um, Mad as Maths ones, wasn't it? Uh, bear with me just while I find this. If you guys have done it, please comment. See if we uh, if we made any tragic mistakes. Yep, something went wrong. Damn it. Ah. Um. Oh, that's bad. What did we do? What did I do? Um, maybe I can recall it. Maybe we can go back. Let's see. This might take some time. Sorry, guys. You should have... Uh... 
Yeah, 108.7. My A and B are wrong, very slightly. What did I do? Oh, that's well annoying. Okay, I'm going to hit back a lot. This uh, might freeze the iPad. But I don't know if you guys... Have you guys done it yet? Do you want to... Um, Anyone actually got what they think the, the center of this circle and the radius are? If you haven't, spend the next couple of minutes working it out while I try and retrace my steps um, with this painfully slow iPad. You can see it's uh, gradually deleting line by line what I've written for the last five minutes. First equation was wrong. Why didn't you say anything, Harry? <laughs> Right. Um, yeah. If you guys comment your answers, um, we will get back to this um, shortly. Hopefully, three six and root two. Uh, close, George. You got a sign error. Root two is right for the radius, though. Who? This is painful, isn't it? Um, hmm. <laughs> I did 4a, not minus 4a. Damn it. Did I not put in minus 4? It's because I got confused about x and y. And that would be what it is. Alright, um. Alright, let's try and let's try and bodge this back together. I can't be bothered to wait for that. Real speedy, like. Let's see if we can race through this. You guys, you, we, I've gone through the theory. I just, uh, my workings were bad. So we're going to use this point for red, this point for blue. Let's do red first. So we're going to get minus 4 squared plus 7 squared minus 4a plus 7b plus 43 for 0. And for blue, minus 2 squared. If I put some brackets around that. Uh, plus 5 squared minus 2a plus 5b plus 43 equals 0. Cool. So that will give me uh, 16 red, did it here? 16 plus 49 minus 4a plus 7b plus 43 is 0. And that will simplify to give me minus 4a plus 7b equals minus 108. In blue we're going to get 4 plus 25 minus 2a plus 5b plus 43 is 0. Simplify that to get minus 2a plus 5b is minus 72. Solve those like I said, times the blue one by 2, add them together and uh, we're going to cancel out everything to get b is minus 12. Sub that back in to get a is 6. Banging. Cool. Alright, so let's go back to our difference of squares and redeem ourselves. By ourselves, I mean me. So, uh, da -da -da -da. x squared, you see that? Yep. Plus y squared plus 6x minus 12y plus 43. 0. Complete the square, x plus 3, that's a lot nicer, isn't it? Minus uh, 9, plus y minus 6, minus 36, plus 43 is 0. Add all the stuff over, so we're going to get minus 43, plus 36, plus 9, which gives me 2, as George said. So we get x plus 3 squared, plus y minus 6 squared equals 2. So the center is minus 3, 6, and radius is root 2. Cool. Fixed it. Nice. All right. So part B of this question. A uh, straight line passes through a point and is a tangent to our circle at the point Q. All right. So the length of PQ is this. So P is our... Okay. Um, let's find the equation of this thing. 
Uh, so we've got this draw thing. So we've got a circle, we've got straight line passes through a point. P may be here and is a tangent. So there we go, tangent. And that's the point Q there. There's option to see there. We want to find the length of PQ. No, we don't. <laughs> Okay. Let's see. All right, so we want to find the length of P to Q. All right, we know P is 4, 5. Okay. Uh, nice, this is an interesting one. Okay. Um, okay, so we could find the length of the line from P to C. That's pretty easy. Um, Is that what it wants? No, P to Q. Um, oh, and C is the radius, so we know the length of this line as well. Easy, cool. So yeah, this line is root 2. We can find P to C, which is called the center. So we can do a uh, length line. So uh, what should we do? 6 minus 5 squared plus minus three minus four squared rooted so we get one squared um minus seven squared so plus 49 so we get root 50 so that length there is root 50. it's got to be a right angle because it's a tangent so we can find the length of that one by doing well root 50 is our hypotenuse so root 50 I wrote 20, or I said 50. Root 50 squared equals root 2 squared plus PQ squared. So 50 equals 2 plus PQ squared. So I'd say PQ squared is 48. So PQ is root 48. And we can split root 48 up using thirds. Um, 48 is 3 lots of 16, so we're going to get PQ is root 16 times root 3. Root 16 is 4, so we get 4 root 3. There we go. Cool. How long have we got? 10 minutes. Maybe we can do one more. Oh, it's going to be tight, but let's, let's try it. So could you guys do this? 6 minutes to do it, and that gives me 4 minutes to go through it. So, timer starts now. Six minutes. Please comment your answers when you got them. And go.
Cool. Right. Um, still no answers, but hopefully you guys managed to do it okay. Let's uh, do this and then that's it for today. So. Oh god, this is going to take ages, isn't it? Final expansion of this. Bit. So we've got to expand. Um, well, I'm not going to expand the first one. That's what I'm going to do. So we're expanding 1 plus 2x to the power 6. Why? And uh, this one we can just do quadratic, so it'll be 9 plus 12x plus 4x squared. This one we need to use binomial, so we've got 6c0. Obviously, I'm including this q term, so I don't need that. This is the ah, sorry guys. So yeah, uh, the the top bit I just expanded as a quadratic. The x to the the thing to the six, I'm using the binomial expansion. Um, so six c zero times one is going to be one. Sixty one is six times one is six times two is twelve, so plus twelve x. 6c2, I don't remember off the top of my head. Oh god, I've only got the graphical calculator. Ah, 6, option, numeric, no, prob, NCR. Yeah, if you don't know where the uh, NCR button is on the calculator, I will show you guys quickly. You go to, um, oops, let's go back to main menu real quick. You go to um, option. Stat, nope, <laughs> option, prob for probability, and then it's NCR. And it just puts the C in, so then you might want to go left and do like 6, C, probably on 62, so 15. So we get 15 times 1 times 2 squared. 2 squared is 4, so 15 times 4 gives me 60 as my coefficient here. And 6c3, I think, might be 16 as well. Um, so if you just go up, be lazy, don't don't find it again. 6c3 gives me 20. So 20 times 2 cubed is 20 times 8. It's 160. Thanks, cubed. So that's my expansion of the red bit. I had to times that by the expansion of the blue bit. 9 minus 12x plus 4x squared. And we're going up to and included in the x cubed term. So we can be a bit picky with how we expand these. So I'm going to get 9. I'm going to get minus 12x. I'm going to get 4x squared. That's my first bit done. I'm going to get 9 times 12, which is 108x. I'm going to get 12 times 12, which is minus 144x squared. And we'll get 4 times 12, 48x cubed. Uh, next one, we're going to get 60 times 9, so we're going to get 540x squared. We're going to get 12 times 60, so we're going to get minus 720x cubed. I'm not going to do the last bit because that will give us power 4. And the last one, we're going to get 160 times 9, which is plus 1440x cubed. So there's my full expansion. We just need to simplify this now. So let's do that here at the top. So we're going to get 9 as my only numerical value. Then we've got uh, 108 take 12 gives me 96. So that's plus 96x. X squared, there's a few of these. So we've got um, 540 take 144 plus 4. So just 600 and, nope, did that wrong. 540, take 144, plus 4, gives me 400x squared. And x cubed, we got 1,440, minus 720, plus 48. So that's 768x cubed. Cool, I'm just going to check that before I uh, sign off for the day. Yep, good, that's it. Cool. 
anyone got any questions about today? Um, I wrote that we got here. A1 got here. I don't know how much is left. What have we got? 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13. So, yeah, we're just over halfway through, which is good. Uh, we'll definitely finish this on Friday in time for your test next week. If there's any topics you want me to go over on Friday, we'll probably have about 20 minutes left at the end. Um, so if there are any topics you want me to specifically go over and reteach you before the test next week, let me know. The test will be up on Moodle. There's some instructions there as well. It's also going to be emailed to you. It's two papers. It takes two hours in total. You can do each paper separately if you like, or you can sit down and just smash through both papers. Um, I'd rather you guys write on the paper. So if you can print it and then write on it and then scan it or take a picture of it, that'd be the ideal way of doing it. If you have to do it online paper, do that. Um, and if you do need to post it, uh, you can either post it to college or you can post it directly to me, uh, which will probably make it easier again. But uh, if you can't print it and scan it, let me know and I'll think of other ways, other ways that you can do it. Cool. Um, so get revising. It does matter. There's loads of papers on Moodle. Keep revising. Do a few before the test next week. And you've got Monday to Wednesday to do it. So choose a time and uh, sit down and get it done. All right. Thanks, guys. See you on Friday.